Utilizing groundbreaking technology, scientists at the Grand Canyon were able to discover ancient mummies, hieroglyphics, and mysterious caves that baffled the whole scientific community around the world. As we learned, ancient civilizations at the Grand Canyon were very advanced and intelligent people that made a lot of great innovations that are hard to believe. This tale is about bizarre ceremonies, strong legends, and a deep bond with nature. The sounds of history can be heard throughout the canyon, as though the spirits of the old residents remain, protecting their mysteries and waiting to be found. However, the Grand Canyon conceals more than just old artwork. Deep within, researchers have discovered a series of mysterious and puzzling events that go against common knowledge. Weird lights, spooky noises, and mysterious symbols have become the focus of many investigations, sparking interest and wonder in those brave enough to explore the canyon's hidden areas. So, the Grand Canyon's history is rich and varied, with human habitation dating back thousands of years. The area's first inhabitants, the Paleo-Indians, roamed the region as early as 12,000 years ago, followed by the archaic, basket maker, ancestral Plebowin, and eventually the modern Native American tribes. A fascinating aspect of the Grand Canyon's cultural heritage is its rich tradition of basketry. The Grand Canyon has been home to numerous Native American tribes for thousands of years, including the ancestral Plebowins, the Kohonina, the Pai, and the Holopai. Each of these groups developed their own unique basket-making techniques and styles, which continue to be an integral part of their cultural identity. Basketry, the art of weaving baskets, is one of the oldest forms of art that is still practiced today. Baskets were once used for various purposes, such as food storage, transportation, and even as baby cradles. For Native American tribes, baskets were an essential part of daily life, and each tribe had its unique style of basket weaving. The discovery of basketry in the Grand Canyon dates back to the late 19th century, when European explorers began to explore the area. One of the first documented discoveries of basketry was made by Powell. He and his team discovered small ancient ruins in the canyon, and among the ruins were various artifacts, including baskets. Powell's discovery of basketry in the Grand Canyon marked the beginning of a new era in the study of Native American culture. Archaeologists and historians began to explore the canyon's ancient ruins, searching for artifacts and other evidence of the area's rich cultural history. Over the years, numerous baskets have been discovered in the Grand Canyon, each one providing insights into the lives and traditions of the people who once lived in the region. The baskets were made from various materials, including willow, yucca, and reeds, and each one is unique in its design and purpose. Basketry played an essential role in the social organization of the native communities in the Grand Canyon. The crafting of baskets was typically the domain of women, and their expertise in this art form often determined their social standing within the tribe. Skilled basket makers were highly regarded, and their works highly valued. The passing down of basket making techniques from one generation to the next also fostered a sense of cultural continuity and helped to maintain social cohesion. Basketry is an integral part of Native American culture and has been passed down through generations as a way to connect with one's ancestors and to maintain cultural traditions. The discovery of these baskets in the Grand Canyon reinforces the importance of preserving and celebrating this art form and recognizing the critical role that indigenous communities play in shaping our world, said Dr. Jessica Metcalf, Native American Studies scholar. The exchange of baskets and the materials used in their construction also facilitated intertribal trade, fostering economic interdependence and the sharing of resources. Variations in basketry styles and techniques can be traced to specific geographic locations, providing evidence of the movement of goods and ideas across the region. It is important to note that baskets held religious and symbolic significance for the indigenous communities of the Grand Canyon. They were often used in rituals and ceremonies with specific designs and motifs representing important cultural symbols or spiritual concepts. Some baskets were specifically created for ceremonial purposes, while others had dual functionality, serving both practical and symbolic roles. The basketry tradition also illustrates the deep spiritual connection these communities had with their natural environment, as they used locally sourced materials and imbued their creations with meaning derived from their surroundings. Moreover, in 1930, a group of archaeologists discovered a cave near the Grand Canyon that would go on to make a significant contribution to our understanding of prehistoric times. The discovery of the cave was significant, not only for the prehistoric remains found within it, but also for the various artifacts that provided insight into the lives of people who lived thousands of years ago. 
The discovery of the prehistoric woman and the artifacts, estimated to be over 4,000 years old, has been a fascinating topic for researchers and archaeologists ever since. The woman's remains were found buried in the cave, along with various artifacts that were believed to have been buried with her. The prehistoric woman was of average height and build for her time, which is indicative of the general population in the region. Her bone structure revealed a relatively robust physique, which would have been necessary for the physically demanding tasks she likely performed, such as farming, foraging, and carrying heavy loads. These findings were consistent with the prehistoric woman being an active member of her society, contributing to the daily tasks essential for survival. It was also determined that she was approximately 25 to 30 years old at the time of her death. Her skeletal structure revealed a lifestyle that was labor-intensive, with signs of wear and tear on her joints and bones. Researchers also discovered dental wear and tooth decay, suggesting a diet rich in carbohydrates and possibly abrasive food substances. While it is challenging to pinpoint the exact cause of death from her remains alone, the absence of any obvious signs of trauma or violence suggests that she may have succumbed to an illness or natural causes. The relatively young age at which she died could be indicative of the harsh living conditions and limited access to medical care that characterized her society. The woman's pelvic bones and other skeletal indicators suggest that she may have given birth to at least one child during her lifetime. This information, combined with her relatively young age at the time of death, provides a glimpse into the social dynamics and family structures of her society. It is likely that women in her community played an essential role in child rearing and maintaining the health and stability of their families. The age of the remains and artifacts indicates that there were sophisticated societies and cultures in North America long before the arrival of Europeans, said Dr. Heather Miller, archaeologist and professor at the University of Notre Dame. The artifacts found in the cave included baskets, pottery, and tools made of stone and bone. These artifacts gave researchers a glimpse into the daily lives of prehistoric people and provided information about their skills and materials they used. The discovery of the artifacts also helped to shed light on the technological advancements made by prehistoric societies, which were more advanced than previously believed. As archaeologist Dr. Douglas Bamforth said, the discovery of the prehistoric woman and artifacts near the Grand Canyon is a significant contribution to our understanding of the human story in North America and underscores the importance of continuing to explore and excavate archaeological sites throughout the continent. While the canyon has been a source of wonder and inspiration for millennia, it wasn't until relatively recently that the true extent of the rock art present in the region was uncovered. The first documented rock art in the Grand Canyon was discovered in 1927 by a man named John Witherill. Witherill was a trader and explorer who had spent much of his life in the Southwest, trading with Native American tribes and exploring remote areas of the region. He was familiar with the Grand Canyon and had spent many years exploring its rugged terrain. One day, while exploring a remote area of the canyon, Wetherill stumbled upon a series of rock art panels that were unlike anything he had ever seen before. The panels featured intricate geometric designs, abstract symbols, and images of animals such as bighorn sheep, deer, and mountain lions. Wetherill was astounded by what he had found and immediately recognized the significance of the discovery. Wetherill returned to the area several times over the next few years, documenting the rock art and studying its significance. He shared his findings with the scientific community, and soon archaeologists and anthropologists from around the world were flocking to the Grand Canyon to study the rock art. The rock art comprises both petroglyphs, carvings or peckings in the rock surface, and pictographs, paintings on the rock surface, offering a fascinating look into the lives and culture of the ancient peoples who created them. This discovery exhibits a variety of techniques and materials, reflective of the different cultures and time periods that produced them. Petroglyphs were created using a process called pecking. This technique involved chipping away at the rock surface using a hard stone or metal tool, such as hammerstone or chisel. The artist would repeatedly strike the rock in a controlled manner, gradually forming the desired shape or pattern. There are several variations of this technique, such as direct pecking, indirect pecking, and abrasion. Direct pecking involved directly striking the rock surface with a hammerstone, creating depressions and removing small fragments of rock to form the design. Indirect pecking involved placing a chisel-like tool on the rock surface and striking it with a hammerstone, allowing for more precise control over the petroglyph's shape and size. Abrasion was another technique in which the artist 
would use a coarse stone or sand to grind and smooth the rock surface, either to create a specific design or to polish and refine an existing petroglyph. Pictographs, on the other hand, were painted onto the rock surface using a range of natural materials. The creation of pictographs involves several steps, including pigment preparation, binder selection, and application. The artist would gather pigments from minerals and other natural sources, such as iron oxide, red ochre, manganese dioxide, black, and kaolin clay, white. The pigments were ground into a fine powder and then mixed with a liquid to create a paint-like substance. Binders were essential for ensuring that the pigment adhered to the rock surface and remained intact over time. Organic binders, such as plant resins, animal fat, blood, or egg, were commonly used. The choice of binder often depended on the availability of resources and the desired consistency of the paint. Pictographs were applied to the rock surface using various tools, such as brushes made from animal hair or plant fibers, reed pens, or even the artist's fingers. The artist would carefully apply the paint to the rock surface, often layering different colors and creating intricate designs. In some cases, they would first prepare the rock surface by smoothing it or applying a base layer of paint to enhance the colors of the pictograph. One of the most striking examples of rock art in the Grand Canyon is the image of the flute player. The flute player, also known as the Coco Pelli, is a popular figure in Native American mythology, particularly in the southwestern United States. It is often depicted as a humped back figure with a flute, which is believed to represent the spirit of music and fertility. The flute player is also associated with agriculture, rain, and the arrival of spring. The image of the flute player is found in rock art throughout the Southwest and is considered one of the most enduring and recognizable symbols of Native American culture. The flute player rock art is unique because of its location and its size. The image is one of the largest and most detailed flute player images in the Southwest, and it is also one of the few examples of rock art in the Grand Canyon that can be attributed to a specific Native American culture. The Hopi people, who have lived in the Southwest for thousands of years, are known for their flute player imagery, and it is believed that they were responsible for the creation of this particular image. It is worth noting that in recent years, archaeologists have made a remarkable discovery in the Grand Canyon, the Sun Dagger, a fascinating example of ancient rock art. The Sun Dagger is a complex arrangement of rocks that create a unique shadow pattern on the cliff face during the summer solstice. The pattern is created by three large boulders that are precisely positioned to cast shadows onto a flat stone slab. This arrangement of rocks creates a series of concentric circles and lines that are believed to have been used for astronomical observations and marking the passing of the seasons. The Sun Dagger was discovered in the 1970s by a group of hikers who were exploring the canyons. They noticed the unusual shadow patterns and reported their discovery to archaeologists. After several years of study, it was determined that the Sun Dagger was likely created by the ancestral Puebloan people. Additionally, the discovery of the Thunderbird image on the rock face in the Grand Canyon is a fascinating and significant event in the history of North America. The image depicts a bird with lightning bolts emanating from its wings, which has been interpreted by many as a representation of the mythical Thunderbird, a powerful and revered figure in Native American folklore. The discovery was made by John Wesley Powell, an explorer and geologist who led the first scientific exploration down the Colorado River in 1869. During his expedition, Powell and his team came across the image while exploring the cliffs of the Grand Canyon. The image was located on a steep cliff face, approximately 3,000 feet above the Colorado River, and was carved into the rock using a primitive chisel or stone tool. Today, the Thunderbird image remains an important symbol of Native American culture and is recognized as an important artifact of American history. The image has been designated as a National Historic Landmark and is protected by the National Park Service. The discovery of rock art in the Grand Canyon has provided invaluable insight into the beliefs, rituals, and daily life of the various cultures that inhabited the region. The art often features a mix of abstract and representational designs, including geometric patterns, human and animal figures, and symbols believed to hold spiritual significance. These images offer a unique window into the worldview of these ancient peoples and can help us better understand their way of life. In addition to their cultural value, these ancient artworks also hold historical significance. By studying the different styles and techniques used in the creation of rock art, archaeologists can establish a rough timeline for the various cultures that inhabited the Grand Canyon. The rock art can be used to trace the movement of ancient peoples throughout the region, 
revealing important information about trade, migration, and the diffusion of ideas and technology. Given the age of these artworks and their exposure to the elements, it is remarkable that they have survived to this day. In some instances, artists took additional measures to protect their creations. Some artists would cover their pictographs with a transparent or translucent layer of a natural substance, such as plant resin or mineral varnish. This would help shield the artwork from weathering and erosion. Many rock art sites were intentionally chosen for their natural protection from the elements. Artists often selected rock faces that were sheltered from direct sunlight, wind and rain, or in caves and overhangs that provided additional protection. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell 